If you've ever baked multiple nav meshes, you've probably run into the situation where you want to distinguish which agent can move to a particular location. We typically use nav mesh sampled position. You can only specify which area types you want to be able to sample, or at least that's what I thought. In this video, you're going to learn how to specify to the nav mesh sample position. I only want a nav mesh that this type of agent can walk on. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you make your game dev dreams become a reality by helping you distinguish if an agent can walk at a particular location, even if you have multiple nav meshes baked. Now in my 50 video, over 50 video AI series now, I've used nav mesh sample position dozens or maybe even hundreds of times. And I've never been able to tell an agent can't walk in this particular area. And when I started making this micro game Chicken Defense, which you can play for free on itch and download the full project off from GitHub, it's fully open source. I had the problem where I didn't want the llamas to be able to go inside the chicken coop. So if I was doing nav mesh sample position, just to determine if the llama could go there, well, the chickens can walk there, the snakes can walk there, the foxes can walk there. So nav mesh sample position returned true. There's an overload to the nav mesh sample position where you can provide a nav mesh query filter instead of just an area mask. The nav mesh query filter supports providing the agent type ID and an area mask. So you can determine from those two, can this agent walk on this particular area or is there somewhere nearby because you can provide the radius still. This was really beneficial because whenever you want to place a new llama down, you don't want to be able to place them inside the chicken coop because the llamas can't get there. So I found out this when I was implementing this game and I thought I'd share that with you. Let's take a look at how I use this to set the material of the llama to indicate to the player that they cannot place a llama inside the chicken coop. We click on this llama, we can see the kind of blue ghost effect. And if I move them into the chicken coop, they turn red because I'm not allowed to place a llama here. Once we get to the edge where they can walk, I can successfully place a llama there. So we're doing this with nav mesh query filter. If we take a look at our scene in my world, I have a bunch of nav meshes. So let's look at them one at a time. So the llama type cannot come inside here. I've got a nav mesh modifier volume, excluding the interior of this chicken coop. The chickens can only walk on the inside. Snakes ignore the fence and a fox is blocked by the fence, but they have these little nav mesh links here to jump over. So because there are many nav mesh agents that can walk on the inside, we can't use a standard nav mesh sample position because that's going to find some nav mesh position inside the chicken coop because three of the four units can walk there. So here in my player building controller, we have a ghost that we're going to set the color and position based on our camera ray. And we just do a raycast from there. And we're importantly using nav mesh sample position. And notice we provide this query filter. So nav mesh query filter, we have the area mask and the agent type ID. This agent type ID comes from the nav mesh agent. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Based on the agent that we are trying to place, we're setting the agent type ID to the agent type ID and the area mask to any place where the llama can walk. I have a really simple nav mesh for the llamas where they can walk it basically anywhere except inside the chicken coop. So this area mask is effectively all areas. So if this sample position returns true with a very small radius, we'll set the color property to be this kind of blue color. And this is false, meaning we're either raycasting off the level, which technically isn't possible with how this level is set up, but the sample position can return false. So like we can't place them inside of a tree, we will set the property to red. So we're gonna turn them that red color. And that's really all there is to know. So as you can see, this is a really powerful, awesome addition to your ability to use anything to do with a nav mesh. We can now easily distinguish between which nav mesh we want to sample position on, which before making this micro game, I really didn't know how to do. I thought this was maybe a gap in what Unity had to offer. I'm really happy that this exists. Don't forget the full chicken defense project is available on GitHub for free. You can download it, play with it on your own machine. There's even challenges in there so you can test your understanding of how different things work. And of course, it's available on itch to play for free as well. If you think that's really awesome and you want to show your support for the channel, you can do a donation there on itch.io. You can get yourself some merch at the Llama Academy merch store. You can use the affiliate links down in the description to make any asset store or humble bundle purchases. That gives me a small percentage of the purchase price at no additional charge to you. Or you can become a Patreon supporter or YouTube member. If you do that, you'll get your name in every single video, your name on every single GitHub project, access to a supporter exclusive Discord server. Starting at the awesome tier, you'll also get a shout out at the end of every video, like Ivan, Ifiabolus, Perry, Mustafa, and Jerematic. There's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.